Now, when it comes to the implementation itself, we need to choose several core elements. We've made some core element choices already. When we talked about our cybernetical structure, when we talked about using linear quadratic regulators by saying that they would be gain scheduled, etc., etc., we also made choices when we decided to implement the overall control structure as an automaton allowing the vehicle to switch from mode to mode. Prior to that, we made also other choices related to the hardware of the helicopter itself. We did not talk too much about them because it was not the time to do so, but they are very important and they are a very important part of the design. And as we discussed before, although design in these lectures comes after modeling and comes after formulating the dream, after conceiving the machine or the system that we want, design can happen in any order relative to modeling and other phases of the operation. So some of the design that we had to do happened prior to the flight itself, okay? For example, the choice of the sensors, the choice of the actuators were made before any model was obtained. The way the pilots and the pilot actions could be recorded inside the computer memory was done before modeling and before design. That, however, very important. And another element that needed to be done before flight tests was to implement a ground station. The low-level components that are necessary in order to start building the system include, in the particular case of the helicopter, that is our running example throughout this lecture, a compute unit consisting of a PC-104 board equipped with a proper Pentium chip. It also included a real-time operating system. In that case, and at that time, it was the QNX5 operating system. It also included a dedicated interface allowing automation to switch between pilot inputs and computer-generated inputs. And of course, it included the machine itself. In addition, we also had a manual interface, a radio transmitter receiver, we also had a GPS measurement system made by Novatel, a pressure altimeter, and also an inertial measurement unit. For illustration, this was the inertial measurement unit that we were using at the time, around 2005. It was called a strap-down inertial measurement unit, where what was measured included the accelerations as well as the angular rates undergone by the unit. 